I just feel that it's something has to be done. You know, you go into the hospital to have a baby, you know, you're excited. And then to come home, sometimes it's babyless, sometimes it's motherless, sometimes it's both. Something has to happen. We have a voice. Listening to what we have to say. If she's telling you something is wrong, you stop what you're doing and, and tend to her. If they would attend to her properly, she would still be here. It's, that should, that's something that should never happen. Like, a mother should be leaving with her kid and her partner. I met Shaeja in Atlanta. She was out there with her family. I was out there with a few friends. She was very outgoing, very friendly, very sweet. She had a little spicy edge to her when she felt like she needed to or wanted to. I really didn't like my brother talking to my friends. He had a crush on her forever. I liked her probably about like six, seven years. And once we went on like our first date, it was just, we were both like shy. When we first started talking with each other, we always talked about like having a kid. We planned everything. Like we had a whole plan, goals, what we was going to do. And we was just waiting for Chloe to come. She looked forward to it. She tried to do everything right, you know, and it's unfortunate. So I was with my mom. Uh, we were all just excited that my little brother was having a baby, and I was excited for both of them. They just kept her at her last like doctor's appointment because they said that her blood pressure was too high. The doctor said that he was going to induce her. He asked me to step out. And so I said, like, I, I made a call, and they said that we could be here through, together through the whole process. And then he wasn't really like speaking English, but he spoke English. So I couldn't really understand it, but he said I, it was something and I had to step out. So I stepped out and I FaceTimed my mom and my sister. He called. He had to step out the room because she had to get the epidural. She was sending us text messages before that, like, they're, they're getting ready. She was getting the epidural and then he, um, he conceded and rolling her into somewhere else. And he went through the doors. They was work, trying to work on her, and we just kept hearing cold blue. My grandmother worked in a hospital, so we looked at her like, what does that mean? So she was like, that means that somebody is dying. A couple of doctors came up to me, and they said that it wasn't like good right now, but I just saw like blood and stuff dripping and everything from like the floor to the room, and then it was a door that they didn't let me go in at all. 30 minutes later, my, they brought Chloe out. But I wasn't too focused on seeing what was wrong with Chloe because she was good. I wanted to make sure Shaeja was good. I didn't even ask, was my niece okay? I didn't, my first reaction I said was, where's Shaeja? And he said, they working on her. They tried over 30 times to resuscitate her. At least 15 people like pumping her chest. Like they kept switching like, like, rotating like they'll do like 50 pumps each and keep rotating and she's sitting there lifeless blood all over her body and it's unfair that he even had to witness that we found out that the doctor he basically murdered her he inserted the epidural too far into her spine so it went in three times the amount it was supposed to go in which then the fluid went to her heart, which put her into cardiac arrest. Then she was telling them that she couldn't breathe. They put a breathing tube into her stomach. That man should not have had his job. He had multiple patients that he had coding. He should have been out of there. She shouldn't even have to go through this. He lost his license. Now it is revoked, but he went back to Russia, so he can never practice again in the United States. What more can they do if he's in a whole nother country? You see, 90% of the women that pass away are black. So with this color of your skin, you go in the hospital and you're scared. I'm scared to have kids. I'm scared to even get pregnant. Because I'm scared I'm going to lose my life. <laughs> Chloe, um, I'm not going to Chloe is my granddaughter, more like my daughter, you know, because I basically raise her and do every everything for her, you know? She looks just like her mom. She makes facial expressions like her mom. She's everything of her mom. A lot of people always tell her, like, you remind them, you remind me of your mom, so she knows, she knows her mom, so 
She's just not really aware of like what's going on yet, but she knows I'm on. And it's sad that she can't experience her first daughter. She never even got to hug her. She never got to hold her. Right now, she just thinks she's not here for now, you know? So she'll say she wants to go see her, but when she says she wants to go see her, she wants to go to the mural. That's a place where she likes, you know, she'll talk to her mom and tell her she doesn't like her hair. Like, <laughs> the mural, was, that's a special place for us. Whether we're here, we're somewhere else, that's somewhere we're, all, we're always gonna come. Yeah. You know, as a father, I'm hurt. I never knew that these situations happened before, but after it happened to my, to my baby and became more conscious. The hospitals just gotta do better to where fathers, mothers, other family members don't have to go through the hurt. This shouldn't happen. This whole situation brought me into more awareness of how black and brown women are treated during labor and delivery. Like, how can a third world country produce more sound babies than in America? Like, it's not right. You shouldn't have a birth and a funeral. It's a lot of people that are talking, but nobody's listening. I just think that everybody should just be on top of everything. Like, just don't don't let them try to take advantage of you. Don't tell them you can't do this and that, because you you should be able to do that. The doctors should be the ones that's helping us, so. Nobody, not just age, and nobody deserves to be treated that way or losing their life just to give a life. She would have been such a good mom. She would have been such a good mother.